Hi, my name is Benedict for Higher Hertz. In this episode, I am looking at a piano sample set. Now, before we go too far into this, I am no pianoist. I am no piano purist even. If you really need to know, I actually grew up with harpsichords. My father built harpsichords and I ended up helping in the process from time to time with all my thumbs. Uh, so if anything, I may know a little less than the average person about uh, pianos because I know more about harpsichords. However, these people, key instruments, asked if we would like to have a look. I assume they've had a look at what I do and how I do it, in which case I think, yeah, because I actually do like pianos. Pianos are possibly, and people are going to be bent about this, but I don't care, pianos are possibly one of the most versatile and potentially expressive instruments in the, the human repertoire. And I'm not including the synthesizer because the synthesizer is like a bunch of instruments as such. But the piano as a, as a physical acoustic instrument is probably unrivaled in its breadth or its ability. Uh, the other thing I'm kind of discounting there is the pipe organ. But again, even, if, even though the pipe organ can be louder and bigger and all kinds of things like that and pretend to emulate other instruments, the reality is I think that the piano is probably capable of more in a broad sort of sense. So it's understandable that we might want quite expressive piano sounds in our door. Uh, and more than that, because there is no one piano, we might well want or need a variety of piano sounds as well. Let's take a quick listen. Now, this is not my playing. You'll get to hear some of that later. Uh, this is a MIDI file I just grabbed at random off the internet. It's Chopin, because when you're playing the piano, really, who should you play but Chopin? <laughs> That tells us something about the sample set as well. It's got uh, quite a lot of extra bits and pieces which help build the realism of the instrument as an instrument. Again, I'm not going to compare it much to other things, although I do have a section later where we do, but in no way are you to think that I'm comparing this to some full-on other sample thing. That's your business. If you know and you care about those details, you're going to work that out probably fairly quickly. But I think it's a really nice sound. It's a lot warmer, it's a lot more detailed, it's a lot richer than your average sound, which we we'll look at later. Now, just a little bit of the, uh, the um, housekeeping, the sound. There's a tiny bit of saturation. You won't hear much of a difference, but it's likely to appear on any recording, so it's not unreasonable to have it there. We've also got, across every instrument that you'll hear as we progress, a tiny bit of reverb. It's, again, to be expected that it's there. It is an algorithmic reverb, so it's not adding any of that kind of weird tonal stuff that uh, impulse responses can add. in a softer, looser kind of format. Again, I don't pretend to be able to play piano. It's a, an impressionist <laughs> approach to pianoing. So very nice instrument. Key instruments. They're not a mob that I have heard of. Apparently they have a studio in the Netherlands and during Spamdemic, they found themselves at a loose end, as we kind of all did, and said, why don't we sample some of the things we have in our studio? And apparently their piano is a somewhat prized thing. I know 
nothing about that, nor do I really know how it's pronounced. I don't know whether it's its name, like Jim or James, or whether that translates to something. I've seen various translations from it being somebody's name to a broad meaning like it's pouring with rain. I don't know, I won't get into that. Price is 75 euro. So I think that's pretty fair up against some heavyweight piano sets. I think this probably holds its own overall. Uh, there is information to be had about the original piano and there are things that you can hear. If it's interested you enough to be looking around on the internet, then hopefully you're having a look at this and we'll see something different from the typical, here's my piano preview. It will play in contacts player, so you don't have to own contact to be able to use this. I like that. That is nice. That is friendly. If you say, well, it could be cheaper, well, that is a factor of price to be able to appear properly. Overall, really, ultimately, it comes down to how does this thing sound? So I'd let you read the website if you're interested. We've already started down the sound road. I'll run through a good and bad. To be honest, I feel a little funny about doing this in the situation, but this is what I do, so it's only fair to do it here as well. What do I think? Well, what I think is that uh, you've got a really warm character piano. And I like it. It comes with some extra sounds which we'll look through. Some of them are straight up front, as in um, alternate versions of how the piano might be voiced is probably the right word to use there. Um, and they add different kinds of tones and completely different kinds of instruments as such. That is nice. But it also comes with a collection of samples of, um, well, shall we say fan sounds or misuse of the piano, which you're either going to totally ignore or find a use for in another purpose. We will have a look at those a little bit better. I think that it does present good value for money because you're getting a unique instrument sound. One of the things that traditionally has frustrated me with piano samples is that they can be very raw, pure, perfectionist, kind of hard as a result, uh, or they're just too too warm, too muddy, uh, to, to do much with. This kind of bridges that gap. Is it going to be a piano used for absolutely everything? Probably not. Are you going to make house music dance hits with this? Well, go for it, but probably not. Uh, but in terms of having a characterful piano that is going to help sort of anchor a track in being real rather than here's just another Triton sample set. Uh, I, I think, yeah, I think it's actually really great in that sense. Features of the instrument. Well, when you open it up, you've got these options, pure, felted, muted, and picked. Might have been wise to put 0104 like 0102, 03, 04 to keep them in the right order, but you can work it out. It's not like you have to go digging for it. So I've put them in what I assume to be kind of the same order here. We've got the pure instrument. Obviously, it's going to depend how you play. Not pretending to be any good at that per se. There are some presets within this. We've got the natural experience, which I assume to be, this is the thing. Then some alteration. So it seems like a warmer, softer, well, as they say, romantic kind of thing. They suggest it'll be great for ballady things. Probably so. This is more of that. Pass music-y kind of thing, you can use that for whatever if you want. If you are after a bright, attacky piano, it does that. I take these to be different sample sets. Nice, warm, jazz kind of thing. And the couch experience.
I think this is as if we were listening to a recital by Benedict, the world-famous pianoist, from The Catch. So that I don't think is necessarily a different set of samples. It's a different set of balance of mics. And then back to the natural experience. And remember, we've got just a tiny little bit of reverb, but it's not likely to influence what you hear per se. Just I think hearing without would probably do more damage. It's a pretty simple experience here. It's not the coolest looking, but it's functional and I think we should be focused on what it sounds like and what it does. We have a couple of microphones. So top, I assume that they are the microphones that are jammed in this bit, the hole in the top where the strings are. They sound like this. You can obviously change the level of any of these. So that is that brighter, harder, unevolved sound. Well, uninvolved sound is probably the fairest way. So let's just pull these out as well. So it's a traditional rumpler kind of approach. You think got a bottom mic? Yeah, don't get it. I've never heard of a bottom mic placement. Maybe it's up underneath the instrument. It would make a certain amount of sense. You'd get a warm resonance there. But if you know enough about pianos to care about having a bottom mic, you know exactly what that is. And then we've got overheads, which I assume to be just like what I have seen and what I happen with drums is that you tend to have a mic or two up here and they capture some room as well as the, the piano at a little bit of a distance as the sound has started to come together and that will sound different. So we do get a slightly brighter enhanced thing. We also tend to get a little bit more stereo in there as well. But the bottom does add a lot of weight to this. light. So a little bit more, it's not problematic in the mix I don't think, especially not where you want a piano like this. Pedal, that's probably the pedal noise. I don't own a pedal. I'm just not, well, I'm not man enough to own a pedal. Keys. Now these only sound when you have these on, so I can't just play you keys. Now, I think that's probably a good thing. Often what happens in this situation, say like with Rad Piano in Reason, is that the key sound is a completely different sample and then it's applied to the, um, to the, the piano samples, the mic samples. Seems like a great idea, but they don't necessarily connect the same way. So how this is done, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that there might actually be a different set of samples with the sounds themselves that bring these keys in. I hear them very poorly in these headphones, but I got the impression that we're actually hearing the keys are oh, there, I can hear it. We're hearing those, those hammers move around. We're hearing the action of the piano. Which is great. Yeah, I reckon that they might be another layer that's built in with the actual sound that's being played. I'm just guessing here, but I think that's actually pretty cool. I like the way they work. They sound less disconnected. So whatever they've done, I think they've done nicely. And then there's Lange. It's a kind of reverb type thing, I think. I don't know whether that's another set of microphones further back in the room, maybe over on the couch. 
uh, or whether there's some kind of trickery in there, like an impulse response, I don't know. It's not always the loveliest of sounds, to be perfectly honest, but in terms of um, its value, well, nothing wrong with that, I guess. It does sound nice, so long as you don't overdo it. If you overdo it, well, you probably want that sound. We've then got tone, and this is adjusting velocity. I did not read the manual. I think it's turning around, turning down the overall velocity that's coming off this. So if we want a, a, a warmer piano, if we go out the other way, then I'm barely playing and it's... And it actually sounds like it's feeding back. Again, we could take that to be, how dare it do that? But I'm thinking that that's probably exactly what happens when we do this in the real world. So you, you might want to be just a little subtle in how you use it. So that is giving us that brighter sort of yeah, metallic hard sound. And then it's a nice warm sound on the other side. We can then adjust the lid. I'd love to think that that is balancing between two samples. Uh, one sample when the lid is down. How they got the mics in, I don't know, but that's their business. And one when the lid's right up. Um, I'm not convinced that that's necessarily going to be the case, but it does change tone a bit. So it brightens the piano overall. As to what's right, that's going to come down to what sound you want and more importantly need in your composition. It's not uncommon as a mix engineer for me to get piano sounds like this. Which is supposed to be sitting very comfortably, warmly in a mix with other things. And applying filters and EQ and what have you to it doesn't really get the same result as this. So my advice is if you're using a piano and you don't know a lot about it, make it sound the way you want it to sound as close as you can to the box of wire. Because if you ask the mix engineer to change the sound dramatically, then chances are you'll end up with something that sounds weird or processed. Processed and weird commonly being the same thing in piano purist terms. I get that. Uh, if unsure, you should be talking to your mix engineer pretty early in the process. Uh, that's always my advice. So we've got, this is the main, main course with these presets in here. We've then got these other ones. They look exactly the same. So I'm not going to go through that because it's the same. You've got essentially the same set of things but it's a felted piano. Now, are these completely new samples? As in, we've done this object, this thing to this piano and then re-recorded it? I think they might be. I would hope they are. Sounds really nice. I don't know much about what a felted piano is, but I do know they can sound nice. That's pretty cool. We've then got the muted piano. This one's a little different. They tell you on the website what they've done to... So if we play just the...
we immediately become very Asian. Uh, it is a nice sound by far. You're probably not going to play your Chopin with that, but in terms of something that you can get this sample set to do, it's actually really nice. So it's this big bonus of, hey, we've got that sand, and then we've got this. It's actually picked with a guitar, plectrum, correct word. Uh, and so you get something that is a little harpsichord-y, and I'm used to a much warmer harpsichord than the, the very brittle sound that most people think of as being representative. Wheel, wheel doesn't do anything, just looking for vibrato. But it gives you a really nice alternate kind of a guitar sound. So really rather cool as a bonus. Those are all part of the package. We're going to compare, let's run our Chopin again. And this is ID8. These are the piano samples that come with Reason, and they're actually really quite nice. But notice the difference in tonal character. This is very bright. Often I warm it up in use. But note that while the idea is actually a really nice sound, very, very usable, uh, it's, it's without a lot of movement or character, whereas our samples are really very nice. They're very warm, they're characterful, they're detailed, and that's really good. Assuming because of the brightness and the pin sharpness of the ID8, I was like, oh, well, immediately that's better. Maybe it's that's the sound you're looking for. Great. But in terms of as a contrast, I would have to do a lot of processing to get this to warm up and have some of that feel. I know, and technically, I should have chosen Radical Piano, but this is just sort of a more representative thing of what you're going to get just in a straight sample set. So an AB of the tone, I'm not saying which one is right or wrong, because I think that's not relevant. With this, you also get a set of samples. Now these are those that are, well, a little all over the place. They are fan sounds. So you've got various things that are these sort of sounds like this. Now you're not going to make an instrument out of these things. Not as such, you're not going to be able to make your own piano out of this. That's a useful one, I guess. So clearly they oh, seem to be hitting the piano with a beer can. Sounds very Australian.
So they seem to be attacking the cabinet. There are these loops. They've obviously put together in their um, door. Sound very loopy. Various effects. You get the impression. I don't know why sandals are sitting loose, but it is. So I grabbed some of these and a sample to give it tonality, because there no, there's no real tonality in any of those sounds. That's not the one. This is the one. Obviously, that's no kind of a piano. So let's just make some adjustment. So that real sort of D50 wave station-y kind of result. And that's just playing the samples in a straight sampler. If I were to put them into something like grain granular, a uh, sample player, then we could do all kinds of interesting things with them, but gives you a sense that these fan sounds can add a lot of character things to things, and assuming that not everyone goes out and buys this piano and gets this fan sound set, then it potentially gives you a slightly different set of character sounds from what everybody who bought a wave station has. There are also, as a matter of interest, a whole lot of other sample packs that you can buy. If you're going, oh, I like the sound of the fan sounds, but I don't want that piano garbage, then scoot on over, have a look, because they've got a whole other section on their site with quite a lot of fan sounds around studio type things. So if that's a path that you want to take, there is actually quite a bit of potential there. This, I think, is fun. It didn't take me long to put this together. So, just a couple of layers of samples. There's a synth in there just to justify the whole thing. And of course, a hertz delay to bring it all together. That's a bonus that's included with the piano, or as I say, they actually sell little sample packs like that from various other things if you go have a look on their website. Now the last thing that I want to show you is because of who and what I am I think very relevant and a lot of people won't necessarily show you this. This is me going well how is this going to work if I use it in amongst other sounds as in We're hearing the piano through a few effects. Doesn't flatter it per se, especially not if we try and play that Chopin. And I've added a synth sound that I made along with it. If we bring back that, let's just turn. This is more of a film composer-y kind of thing, so process piano inside of a, a synth character sound. How does it work? Nicely. Because you've got the advantage of having a characterful sound already, which means that it, it connects better with the, the other sounds that you build around it. 
than when you do this with just that classic Triton kind of perfect piano. So if I swapped the, um, the Ossa for, uh, say, the ID8, we would find that while that patch sounded very clinical, it would sound rather clinical. Um, yes, it would sound more like it came out of a, I don't know, wave station, but it wouldn't be as characterful as this. So if we were looking for a little interlude or something in a, in a film, where we wanted some sense of a piano, let's say we'd be using a piano somewhere else, and we just wanted a piano, then this piano set will work very, very nicely in that sort of situation as well. That's a, that's a big bonus for me because um, while I don't use pianos an awful lot, I often synthesize pianos rather than use samples because it's going to feel, well, it fits easier with my fully synthesized music, but often because those pianos do just feel too much of a separate from my generally synthesized mix because they're too perfect. There are ways you can improve them, but it's nicer to start with a sound that is already characterful. The final words are, I think that it's a very impressive instrument as a character. If you're looking to do the, I don't know, world famous pianoist playing on the world's most perfectest piano on the world's most perfectest stage, this may not be the one you're looking for. Um, but I think that it's a far more personable piano. That will feel, give a more at home, authentic, this is happening here sort of feel in, in whatever way you use it. There is some versatility. The, uh, the attacky sound obviously gets very, very bright. The fact that we can process it and get some really nice results, that it will sit comfortably with synths without a moment's argument is to me a, a really strong point, especially from a film composer point of view. So without knowing a ton about what other piano libraries are like, my general impression is that most of them are, as I indicate, a little too clinical, but maybe those days are largely over. This is a really nice, alternative, interesting character instrument that provided it doesn't become the one that absolutely everybody goes to buy to be uniquely different, then you're going to have a, a, a voice that's a little bit different, which is nice thing. It's a thing I'd love to hear some more of as we move away from this whole everything has to sound exactly like everybody else kind of routine that's horrified me with as a musician, as, as a fan over the last 20 years. Nice instrument, fairly priced, very big package with a lot of options, not just from the, the four or five sounds that are built into here, one, two, three, four, uh, but the um, the extra variety, the, the, the kit of fan sand, the bucket uh, that comes along with that as well, definitely helps you to roll that into other things. Like if I've got that, some of those sands inside this combinator, yeah, it would, it would work beautifully. Conclusion, well, if you have any questions, not specifically about the product or how to make it work, follow the instructions. Uh, you will need to access the this download via the um, Native Instruments Installer, Native Access, I think it's called, their installer program. You can't download this. You go to the Native Access thing. But if you know about contact, you know that that's kind of how it works anyway. It's once you've embedded yourself with NI, then they manage those things, which is generally a good thing. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I want to say how pleased you are with what, what we do for you, hit subscribe and type them on down below. Don't forget, you can also pop over to higher, oh, this is just too hard, higherhertz.com.
home. <laughs> Give me a couple of weeks and I'll learn to get my hands right. And there's a different uh, stream of information there. So have fun. You make sure you have a great day.